the lack operon and inducible overexpression of genes. Suppose, as a scientist, you want to produce a protein of interest in large quantities. Proteins are too complex to be synthesized artificially. They must be translated by living ribosomes. So you're going to have to get a living system to make the protein for you. Let's say you persuade a bacterium to make the protein for you. But if it expends all of its energy trying to make the protein for you, it isn't going to have any time to reproduce. So you won't get enough protein. Solution. Make expression of the protein inducible. In other words, insert the gene for your protein of interest into the bacterium in such a way that the gene is not switched on. Wait until the bacterium has multiplied and then induce protein expression by switching on the gene. Switching genes on and off may sound like a huge technical challenge, but in fact we can simply harness one of the existing natural systems whereby organisms can control the expression of their own genes at a given time or in a given circumstance. One of the most useful of these tools is the LAC operon, a set of E. coli genes expressed only in the presence of lactose. In a normal environment, E. coli uses glucose as a food source, and therefore the proteins that metabolize lactose, LAC proteins, are not needed. Rather than wasting energy by making these proteins, the bacteria save energy by ensuring that the genes for the LAC proteins are not transcribed. However, when the bacteria find themselves in an environment with no glucose, they recognize the presence of lactose and switch on their LAC genes. Consequently, the LAC proteins are produced and lactose can be metabolized. How exactly does this work? Well, the LAC genes form a single operon, which means that they share the same regulatory sequences and so are transcribed together. When the operon is switched on, RNA polymerase binds to the promoter sequence and initiates transcription of the LAC genes to mRNA. However, under normal circumstances, when the E. coli bacteria are metabolizing glucose, a repressor protein, called the LAC repressor, LAC-I, binds to a region of DNA called the operator. When the LAC repressor is bound to the operator, RNA polymerase cannot start transcription so the LAC genes are switched off. The LAC repressor is encoded by the LAC-I gene, a regulatory gene that has a different promoter sequence to the LAC operon. The LAC-I gene is transcribed all the time, so the LAC repressor is produced constantly in all environments. When the bacteria find themselves in an environment where there is no glucose, but lactose is available, lactose enters the cell and binds to the LAC repressor. When the LAC repressor is bound to lactose, it can no longer bind to the operator of the LAC operon. Thus, RNA polymerase is free to transcribe the LAC genes. So how do we harness the LAC operon to get the bacteria to produce our protein of interest? Let's suppose the protein we want to produce is GST. First of all, we need a plasmid containing the LAC repressor gene and the LAC operon. 
Let's have a look at this up close. Now, we swap the LAC genes with the gene encoding our protein of interest, GST. And then, we insert the whole expression plasmid into E. coli bacteria. The LAC repressor ensures that the GST gene is switched off, so the bacteria will multiply as normal. When we have enough bacteria, we can add lactose to switch the gene on. Actually, in practice, we usually add IPTG, which is a molecular mimic of lactose. The advantage of IPTG is that it doesn't get metabolized by the E. coli. When the IPTG is added, it binds to the LAC repressor protein allowing transcription of the GST gene. The technique described here is called inducible overexpression of a gene. Overexpression means an artificially high level of gene expression, producing large amounts of the desired protein. Summary. There are some genes in E. coli that are only switched on when lactose is present. We can copy the regulatory mechanism of these genes and add it to a gene of interest. Now, if we add IPTG, a lactose mimic, we can switch on expression of the gene of interest. We can use this technique for large-scale protein production.